Well, this was very badly done. Clearly, I'm not gonna win any prizes with this. If you saw my video on chain sharpening, you probably noticed that I'm still learning how to use the chain grinder. I've got a lot of the principles right, but the execution is a little lacking yet. So there's a learning curve there. But what I wanted to do was show you what a chain looks like when it's improperly sharpened and trying to cut through some red oak. And I'm going to show you what it does and how it's reacting. So this chain I sharpened a little bit ago and I put it on and I did some uh, I did some pine and it seemed and it worked well with the pine that was no problem but then I switched over or switched back to doing oak I get a lot of oak here so I'm going to show you what this thing does going through a piece of oak now it seems to me now this is just a piece of uh, rock oak it seems like red oak is the real problem that's a problem child this rock oak it seemed to cut through okay still chattering a little bit but uh it cut through it okay so let me run a few pieces here and see what uh what's going on all right, all right sorry about the interruption <laughs> um now i forget where i was i'm going to run some of this oak what it was doing for me with the red oak was it was chattering real bad. It actually got stuck in the cut and stalled the machine. I had to m manually lift the saw out of the cut, which wasn't exactly fun. But I got it out and it was okay after that. But let's see what happens when we run this. Blood. Do not store your chains uncovered in your toolbox. A good thing to carry in your first aid kit is a product called New Skin. Essentially, it's sterile super glue. That's all it is. It was developed, oh, I think back in the Vietnam War for treating wounds. That was a pretty nasty slice I gave myself, reaching in my toolbox and I drew my finger right across one of these poorly sharpened <laughs> saw chain teeth. Well, it was sharp enough to cut my finger open. I bled pretty good there for a few minutes, but anyway. So after I was done bleeding, I put some new skin on there and that seals the wound up. And now, if you can see, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, it's, uh, it's sealed up pretty good. I might put some electrical tape around my finger just to keep it safe, but I'm wearing gloves at this point. Okay, now that I'm done bleeding all over the place, I'm going to replace this chain with another recently sharpened, probably badly sharpened chain. Now this one doesn't look like I touched the rakers too much. I don't remember now, but 
we're going to see how bad it is. Let's get this chain swapped out because that next piece that's on the machine is a large piece of red oak and I'm not happy with the way that chain is cutting it. We're going to swap the chain out and see how badly I sharpened this one. All right, so if you remember from my other video about swapping out the chains, back the adjusting screw all the way out. Just keep on going until the, the bar is completely resting on the studs. One thing that's a bit of an annoyance is this piece right here is in the way. I might take that off of there because it's always in the way when you're trying to turn this adjusting screw. I know in my other video, you couldn't really see what I was talking about with this. There's a lot of sun glare here. I'm having a hard time seeing this myself. Here's the adjusting screw. And see there's a little gap, right? Look at that. Now, what I want to do here is I want to make sure this screw is now... Okay, so what I'm getting at is right now the adjusting stud which goes into the bar is still connected. So you can see I just barely get my screwdriver under there. That's not what I want. I want this screw to be fully seated against this. Okay. See now, now you can't put the screwdriver under it and it's just sitting right on top of it. Now what that's doing for me is that means that the slot in the bar that these two studs go through is sitting all the way down on it. And then when I put this back on, it'll just pop right back in, no hassle whatsoever. Okay. Once again, wearing gloves, actually, I need to take the nuts off all the way now. I'm doing this gingerly because now I have a boo-boo finger. <laughs> okay. Now I'm putting my gloves back on to handle the rest of this. So we just back this out just a little bit. Okay. And then we reach down here and we dislodge the chain from the sprocket. And once that's off of there, this will just pull right off. And that's it. Now, take this off, like that. The next chain on. All right, there's that. Just stick that right back up in there. And now the reverse. We just take our take our hydraulic motor assembly, line the studs up, get it just about in there to where I can still reach the reach the chain. And now we're going to take the chain and put it around the sprocket. And because the bar is all the way down, there's a lot of slack here. So you have plenty of room to work with the chain. And fumble fingers with the gloves on. Trying to get this, get the chain on the sprocket without giving myself a yet another boo-boo. All right, so once it's on the sprocket, then I can shove this in the rest of the way. Now in theory, <clears throat> It should just pop right in. Well, guess what? 
it's not going right in because something must have moved. So do we have to go up? Yep, just a little touch. Okay, now it goes right in. Mounting nuts back on. Obviously we leave these somewhat loose because we still have to adjust the chain. Back to the screwdriver. I am going to find an easier way to do this and it may just be removing this piece of cowling right here. I've already took a couple chunks off the cowling because it was in the way and being extremely annoying. All right, so now it's fairly seated. Make sure it turns. Still got a ways to go. It's not even engaging the sprocket yet. Now we're just doing the final tensioning. Now we're going to see how badly this chain has been sharpened. I'm going to crank it up. We're going to let the chain lube for a minute before we start cutting. All right, there you have it. That second chain that I had sharpened on the bench grinder was a heck of a lot better. It uh, didn't really chatter. It chattered a little tiny bit. And I suspect that's the way I adjusted the rakers. The chain I was using needs to go back to the grinder and be properly adjusted. Now, if the rakers are too low, then all I can do is sharpen the, shorten the teeth. So we'll do another video on that and see, see how it goes. But anyway, that's, uh, that's it for the, the chain comparison. If you enjoyed this or you found it at all useful, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.